You are who you've been looking for. So stop looking for more unless you're looking in a mirror because it's about time for you to see clearly that you are who you've been looking for. And that empty feeling you got, that hole in your chest, you only got that feeling because you think you're not blessed with everything you need. You see, we live in a consumerist society, which means they need you to buy stuff. And the easiest way to sell it is to tell you you're not enough. Buy this car, you'll get girls. Buy this bra, you'll get guys. <laughs> and we're seeing it so much that we start believing these lies, but the truth is, the makeup they're selling to make you feel prettier is the same makeup you buy to stop feeling shittier about this lie they keep telling you that you are not enough. <laughs> And what about the movies we watch, all the shows on TV? The more I watch, the more I see I need you to complete me. And yes, love is the answer, love is the key, but if you can't love yourself, how can you ever love me? And, and loving yourself, what does that even mean? Like massages and selfies and that sort of thing? Because the more I think about it, the more it feels weird. I've always been taught that self-love was something to be feared. I'm supposed to love myself, but how do I even do that? Well, I got a trick that I picked up from a friend who noticed that I was quick to defend her when she would say something negative about herself. She would say, I'm so dumb, and I'd say, you're so brilliant. She'd say, I'm so weak, and I'd say, you're so resilient. And when she said, I feel ugly, and I said, you look beautiful, she asked me why I was so dutifully filling up her cup constantly and yet treating my own cup so irresponsibly. Because when I looked in the mirror, my voice was quite clear. You're ugly, you're too thin, your hairline's receding, you got a pimple on your chin. And that was when she gave me a piece of advice that changed my life. She gave me a hug. And she said, treat yourself like someone you loved. Treat yourself like someone you loved. Now, I had been standing, but I needed to be sitting because I couldn't believe that I had been letting myself keep forgetting that I was who I'd been looking for. And deep in my core, I knew it was time to stop looking for more until I could look through all my fear and look into a mirror and see clearly that the man looking back at me was the only one who can make me happy, and I am already enough. And I am not any more special or unique than you. That is why I'm here to speak to you. You are already enough. And when you start to see that, you will start to be that. Your world will get brighter, your load will get lighter, and you can see that with life. You can be a lover, not a fighter. And that life, you deserve it. Because you are worth it. And there is no point in letting yourself keep forgetting because no matter what you say or do, you are perfect. And so today, I hope I leave you with a direction correction away from the flaws you see in your reflection. They aren't flaws to me, they are simply protection against all the doubts you have of your perfection. So start today. Take a good, long look in the mirror and say, I am who I've been looking for. do you love yourself because if you understand the value of self-love you'll never be friends with those type of people most of the people out here are running around empty they have no sense of self no sense of self-love. When I say self-love, it has nothing to do with celebrity, money, materialistic things, and all of the things that your negative mind could probably go to. It has nothing to do with self-love. It has nothing to do with looks. Nothing to do with cars and any of the superficial things that one would assume that could make you love yourself even more. It's a matter of knowing your value. It's a matter of you saying, I don't have to be around these people in these type of environments and situations in order for me to finally see the value in myself. I love me independent of you loving me. I believe in me 
I know my self-worth. I am here and I have a purpose. There is no value in having wisdom, knowledge, insight, spirituality, love. Every day I am a work in progress. A person who can forgive nothing is a person who's totally destroyed psychologically and emotionally. Forgive your parents. Forgive any relationship that you ever had that didn't work out. Forgive everyone else in your life that has ever hurt you in any way. Forgive yourself. Forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. I think for myself, and I know many of you, you think forgiving means accepting what has happened to you. Well, it is accepting that it has happened to you. Not accepting that it was okay for it to happen. It is accepting that it has happened and now what do I do about it? Forgiving is giving up the hope, not holding on, hoping, wishing that it could have been any other way than it actually was. Giving up the hope that the past could be any different. And when I got that, I think it took me to the next level of being a better person because I don't hold grudges for anything or any situation and neither should you. It's letting go so that the past does not hold you prisoner, does not hold you hostage. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow so you can get on with your life it doesn't matter about what happens to you what matters is what are you going to do about it what are you going to do now Les but if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will. So as you're in the process of reinventing your life, Write a description of the kind of person that you want to be. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Look at and evaluating yourself to make that determination. Other thing is that 
in order to get out of a rut, we need some coaching. Find some trusted critics. People that you know care about you and love you. So there's some things that keeps us from growing and getting out of ruts. Number one, we identify with feedback. We take it personal when someone wants to give us some feedback on where we are falling short and tell us about our blind spots. We want to have everything being positive about us. We're not perfect. It's, it hurts. I, I have a friend who's a trusted critic. I don't like him, but I love him. He doesn't tell me the things I want to hear. He tell me what I need to hear so I can grow. It hurts. It hurts when he put me on the hot seat. I can't stand it. But that's the only way that I can grow. And I'm glad that he loves me enough to risk our friendship to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. Stop scaring yourself. How often do you terrorize yourself with your own thoughts? You get into absolute terror. And it's only coming from your thoughts. Nobody out there is doing a thing. Sometimes it's an old family pattern. Sometimes we get new things. I would like people, to, when you have time, to make a list of your fears. Make a list of your fears. And then give yourself the opportunity to turn each fear into a positive affirmation. Turn each one into something positive. And remember, always you are in charge. You are always in charge. See, one idle thought doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Thoughts are like drops of water. You drop a drop of water and it doesn't mean much. But If you keep dropping and keep dropping, you get a puddle on the floor, and then you can get a little pond and a lake, and finally you can create an ocean. And with our own thoughts, we can drown in a sea of negativity, or we can float on the ocean of life. And it's up to us. The thoughts we think accumulate, and what sort of puddles are you standing in? Or are you up to here? Or are you up to here and trying to paddle? Now, what are you doing to yourself? When we're willing to change our thinking, we can change our experiences. And it doesn't matter if you've got a big a puddle of negative thoughts. You know, you can move over here and create a puddle of mindfulness, positive thoughts. You can make changes, always. So you want to turn those fear thoughts into positive affirmations. Let them work for you.